Good afternoon, everyone. It does uh, feel very different uh, on the virtual setting. I'd like to, at the onset, I'd like to thank uh, Pankaj, his team at FIKI, uh, for really stepping up during this period to still make this event happen. Uh, I'm sure it's, you know, been uh, quite an eventful experience. And, I, and, you know, I really like the quality of the speakers we have with us today. So uh, again, thank you very much, uh, Pankaj and team, for pulling this together. Um, I would like, you know, we have uh, we are lucky that we have a very eminent group of speakers on this panel, and uh, just in keeping in context of the um, of time, uh, we broadly be focusing on four different questions, uh, I mean, or four different uh, sections. The first one, I would request each of the panelists to introduce themselves and their organization, so each one will have context to their work. Uh, the next, then we move to, you know, their experiences of, uh, because each of them work in a, both a local uh, as well as a global setting. So I would be requesting each one to give that context of their experiences, of where India stands today, and what's the gap with the best in the world and where do we, you know, how do we bridge the gap? And then the third phase would be on, uh, or the third um, area would be on how pandemic, you know, has uh, accelerated the absorption of technology and sports science during this period. And uh, we would look at ending this session with each of these speakers giving an outlook of uh, sports science and technology um, in the in you know how where will India be for example 10 or 15 years from now in sports science and technology uh, and potentially uh, how we could be global leaders in this domain so with that um, you know I would like to request um, uh, the speakers uh, one by one uh, starting with uh, Professor Armugam if you could uh, you know start by giving a quick introduction about yourself and your organization. Yeah. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. On the outside, I, I thank uh, the FIKI for uh, inviting me and uh, keeping the uh, opportunity of this uh, wonderful uh, panel discussion. Uh, I'm Dr. Armagam. I'm an orthopedic surgeon by profession and specializing in uh, arthroscopic surgery. I head uh, the Center for Sports Science as a director, which is a part of the Ramachandra Medical College. Uh, we focus mainly on the performance enhancement of the athlete as well as injury prevention, also on the injury um, uh, uh, treatment. And uh, we have the state of the art facilities on the various uh, subspecialties of the sports science. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Armagam. Um, if I could now uh, request uh, Manish. So Manish, you yeah. to please introduce yourself and your organization. Yeah, hi, hi uh, very good afternoon. Um, and uh, I think good evening maybe for Murli, yeah, uh, and everyone. I think uh, it's a pleasure to be part of, uh, you know, such an eminent, uh, you know, uh, panel and industry experts. Uh, uh, my name is Manish Upadhyay, and I head the sports tech business uh, globally for Tech Mahindra. And uh, what we are working on, uh, you know, if you see our history, our history is pretty rich from a sports perspective. So since 2004, we were working with UEFA, then for two World Cups, 2010 and 2014, uh, South Africa and Brazil, we have worked with FIFA, managing their complete games and venue management. And, uh, you know, currently, uh, if you see, we have our own uh, e-sports team, Formula e-sports team, to ensure environmental sustainability, which is Mahindra Racing. And, uh, you know, we work with one of the leading NFL team in US uh, called Jacksonville Jaguar. And just uh, during the pandemic, uh, we have done a digital transformation work for Kings 11 Punjab, one of the IPL team. So, so that's our history and sports tech, uh, you know, we have a very rich legacy of sports and we decided why not, you know, use, uh, because we are specialized in digital transformation and technology. So why not use digital and technology as a lever to disrupt and streamline every part of the sports. So whether, you know, I think what uh, I'm sure the Dr. Mungam and Dr. Majumdar, they carry a rich experience, but you know, measuring the performance of an athlete 
through you know the smart waste or through devices and then you know what to advise him in terms of practice in terms of fitness in terms of you know the nutrients and vitamins and all that that's one part of it where technology can play the role the second part of it is how to enhance the complete experience you know uh, for the fans for the players for the coaches and you know even for the staff to manage it beautifully using technology so that's the second part with which we work and this pandemic honestly speaking has given us fantastic opportunity uh, that we can't watch the game in the stadium and the players they don't feel like the fans are there they don't feel motivated so how technology can bridge this gap and bring the fans closer to the game and grow the game so that's what uh, we are working on so we are working on complete sports ecosystem right from player performance to smart stadium to fans and we are thinking how we can bring all these things together so that's precisely i am going to talk about uh, you know and as and when questions come from uh, you know or discussion flows through so very happy to be part of it and i again welcome uh, from tech mahindra to everyone thank you manish uh, now if i can request uh, dr majumdar uh, you know dr majumdar and i go back quite some time uh, he you know i was a, a young athlete myself when uh, dr majumdar uh, you know, used to conduct the sports science testing uh, at uh, Sports Authority of India in Bangalore. Um, and it's a pleasure having you on this panel, Dr. Majumdar. If you can please share a few words about um, your, your journey and, your, and um, the sports science uh, at um, the Sports Authority of India. Thank you, Hakim. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I am basically exercise physiologist. And uh, I was working in Bangalore for quite some time. And now uh, uh, I am responsible for uh, and acting as head of sports science for SAI, Sports Authority of India, and posted at uh, SAI, New Delhi. So uh, basically, my uh, role is to uh, see that uh, uh, or create the uh, sports science ecosystem throughout the country. And uh, we have selected now 13 centers, uh, 11 different NCOE, and two high performance centers across the country. And uh, uh, my main challenge is to develop uh, the sports science uh, ecosystem in terms of uh, equipment, procurement of equipment. Uh, in a line of sports and through uh, sports and through biometry, then um, exercise physiology, then sports biomechanics, sports psychology, uh, sports nutrition, and um, sports biochemistry. And the manpower also is one of the bigger challenges because we have limited. Uh, uh, really, uh, we are facing challenges because. Um, the trained manpower, uh, which we are uh, with, uh, within the uh, our expectation, uh, I think, uh, because we don't have a really very robust uh, educational program for the sports scientists in the country. Uh, of course, we have the structure for uh, in the medical community, uh, particularly in terms of MD sports medicine. Uh, but we don't have that kind of, you know, uh, for master program in different sports science verticals. So therefore, uh, I mean, uh, the quality stuff which we are expecting possibly is not um, comparable with the international standard. But we are starting that because there are some of the agencies, some of the stakeholders, they are already uh, are in a process of uh, because Armugam, uh, uh, Dr. Armugam has already taken initiative because there are certain program in sports science which is run by his institution. Like that, we have different program across the country. We are planning for uh, sports science development program. So uh, that is a nutshell what is my job role at present. Hakim. Thank you, Dr. Machungar. Um, I would, you know, request uh, Mulidharan now to just share again a few words, uh, just to give the audience a perspective. Um, you know, Manish, um, you know, is joining us from London. 
um, and Muli Dharan is joining us from Singapore. So this is again the beauty of technology, where we are able to bring together, um, you know, on such a platform, stakeholders from diverse geographies. So Muli Dharan, if you can share a few words about your, you know, yourself and your organization. Yeah, thank you, Hakim, uh, and I appreciate uh, Fiki inviting me. Yeah. So I'm Murli Dren, I'm the founder. If I started in a very amateur way of a company called Global Sports Commerce, but it's more popularly known in the world of sport as Tech Trend. Yeah. So I started this journey more as a fanatical uh, fan who fell in love with the sport and who felt sport is all about life. So that's how I started my journey 20 years before. Predominantly as an amateur, that's what uh, you would guess, because 20 years before the sports globally, more particularly in India, was a very amateurish one. To give you some context, uh, today probably cricket uh, BCCA earns a billion dollars from uh, the television advertisement and television uh, broadcast. But those days in 2000, Doodarshan used to collect 5 lakh rupees from BCCI to show the match. So you can see how the sport has evolved from 2000 to 2020. So the journey we started is, as I said, in a very amateurish way, but we quickly realized that uh, there's a lot of depth. And if you dive deep into that particular ocean of sport, you can unravel a lot of interesting things. So that's how we connected to the fan, which is where we felt is one of the core constituents to any sport. And we started connecting to the stakeholder to see how we can elevate through technology and create a value proposition for a better fan experience. Okay. We start off probably with uh, Instadia because that's where we felt that we need to start somewhere and see how we can take that journey of uh, technology, bridging the gap with the fan experience. It started well, primarily because the Indian audience were starving for a better experience in the in-stadium. Because you see the sports so far away, particularly a cricket, which is about 110 meters away from the field of play, you literally can't see a ball. So most of the time, you are just probably a muted spectator watching it. And when we brought the big display technologies and showcased it at the venue, we found that uh, there was a significant connect to the audience. And once you get a connect to the audience of what you call a fan, you clearly immediately probably excite the stakeholders. Okay, that's how we started. So in 20 years, I would say we had done some work and some good work in technology, but also some work in the last 70, 80 years in science. Science is more to gain a depth and a knowledge about what the future should be. And technology is more enabling different tools and probably platform, which can have a quick connect to the fan to serve the appetite of the fan from an experience. So that's how the journey started. And over 20 years, I think we are now connected to some of the best sports leagues, the ICC, the IPS, the UFR, the FIFA, the Rugby World Cup, the IWA World Championship, the Paralympics, the volleyball to the Kabaddi. So we have not left any sport. We have even gone and served the underprivileged sport, what you would call, to see that how they can embrace technology and create either a better commerce for themselves or a better experience for the fan. So we remain committed to the cause that we need to bring sport for uh, sports technology for all type of fan. Doesn't necessarily mean the elite fans watching the cricket or rugby or a football and that's where probably our journey has headed thus far that's how we got connected to the sport and our technology probably i would say uh, aspirations around the sport and where we are today thank you thank you Mulidran, for giving that context um if you can you know uh, just a quick uh, uh, introduction about myself my name is hakimuddin habibullah uh, i'm an olympian swimmer and also an engineer by education. That's where my love for both uh, sport and uh, technology, you know, comes from. I currently um, head Murtha Pools, um, which is one of the premium uh, swimming pool infrastructure um, companies, uh, building some of the best swimming pools. I head the uh, business for India and South Asia. And, uh, you know, it was my introduction to how technology you know, in swimming as well comes into play. And I'll probably share a few tidbits as we move forward. Um, like most of you can see on our panel today, we have uh, Dr. Majumdar and uh, Professor Armugam who uh, come in more from enabling or developing the athletes to ensure that they are be in the best position to perform on the field of play. And uh, if, you know, we have um, Manish and uh, Mulidharan who uh, then look at amplifying those performances to a larger audience you know, um, so that uh, the whole ecosystem can potentially be a winner. Coming to, um, you know, uh, shuffling the, the deck a bit, but coming to the next question of, you know, since each of you are working with 
both at a local level as well as with some of the best in the world. Uh, what is the gap? You know, where is India today when it comes to sports science and technology? And what's the, you know, compared to the best in the world, what's the gap? And um, how do we bridge that gap? So that's the question for this section. And uh, if I may start with Manish. Yep. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry, I just missed some part of your question. I am really sorry about it. If you can just. No, not, not a problem, Manish. I was, mm. I was saying since you're working with a global audience as mm. well, and you've had, you know, a understanding of the Indian context. So mm. wanted your perspective of what's the gap between where we are today in India in terms of sports science and technology versus what you've experienced at a global level and how do we bridge that gap? No, thank you very much. I think that's a very interesting question. So I'll try to uh, break this question into multiple parts. Yeah. So if you if you really see uh, what we are working with, leading, uh, you know, leading European leagues or uh, international leagues uh, sitting out of London is very different than what is my experience with, you know, uh, the, the, you know, the Indian sports diaspora. Uh, while we have a lot of talent, as Dr. Majumdar has said, but where we lag is, you know, the trained uh, people and, you know, definitely technology is something which can definitely bridge the gap. Now, let me let me give you an example. When this pandemic has hit us and I'll slightly take it, uh, you know, I'll come back to the player performance because that's a very important part. But when this pandemic has hit us at that time, you know, every day, uh, you know, if you see the sports industry was going through around one million dollar of loss almost. Yeah, that's the kind of if you just talk about the global loss. And every fan wanted to know what his favorite player and team they're doing. Everyone, you know, uh, the ardent fan like Murli and me, we definitely wanted to know what my favorite player is doing, how he's, you know, um, uh, he, how he's practicing himself for the big day. And that's where we thought about how to connect fan and, uh, you know, uh, the wider sporting ecosystem. And that's where, uh, you know, the digital comes into the rescue and the, the amount of digital transformation or the plans you have seen uh, for four or five years, you know, for sports companies and big, big sporting organization. Let me tell you the biggest amount of digital disruption or transformation has happened in just last six months. So all the sporting organizations, they were planning for two, three year roadmap to drive digitally and all that. But when they saw that it's actually started impacting the business, it's actually came, uh, you know, that they don't have an option other than that. So that that I come back to the Darwin's theory, survival of the fittest, you know. So everyone went for the digital disruption. Now, how the technology is helping and bringing the fans closer to the game and growing the game. So let me give you two or three use cases. So what we are trialing in India, and I have some conversation, uh, sorry, we are trialing in here uh, or experimenting here globally, and what we should be trialing in India is the 5G, yeah. Tech Mahindra, our ecosystem or DNA is telco based. And, you know, we have invested very heavily on the 5G and telecom technologies. Now using 5G, you know, imagine a scenario where all of us are sitting around a table and we are able to see as if we're sitting next to each other. That's the art of possible with the 5G. So we are currently working here with our, some of our uh, you know, partners and customers on how can I bring a stadium to the home and home to the stadium. So there are two use cases I will talk about. Yeah, number one, you know, uh, me, uh, Professor Amungam and Dr. Majumdar, we decided to watch, you know, the Premier League game or UEFA game, which is happening, uh, you know, and we all are from different location. And uh, me and uh, Professor Armungam, we, uh, we, we have a ticket to the stadium because now the audiences are allowed. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> some, some, for some reason, Dr. Majumdar couldn't join us. We can go to the stadium and make a 5G holographic call. And Dr. Majumdar can occupy the seat between me and Professor Armangam as if he's sitting next to us. And we share the expression every moment of the game as if he's physically sitting there. So that's the power of technology. And that's where India is lagging because 5G disruption, if you see Europe and US, they are the leading, uh, you know, of course, China. But India, this technology is yet to come. So, you know, uh, more than the fans' enjoyment, how you want to keep the fans safe, I think that becomes a very, very important thing. 
so that's one part of it and that's the future on which on which we are working if you see how we started we started working on you know because everyone was not having the access to the 5g technology when we started working in march and april on these use cases so if a ipl game is going on and i saw you know a lot of people a uh, lot of broadcasters they started you know replicating it with ambient noise and all that so we are the first one which we brought saying you know if a game is going on can i scream or can i shout at a great moment using my mobile phone or tv or alexa remote and my voice all the cheers will be aggregated and amplified and played back not only on the tv but also on the stadium so that the players they feel like actually crowd is with them so we call it as the fan chant the, that is the first solution which we launched then when we started speaking to the sports organization they said no you guys have to do something else also and then we came about the 5g solution so we can i can project a live stadium game on my dining table or on my study table and i can see with the help of 360 degree ar vr camera as if i am watching the game from a helicopter about the stadium so that's the kind of immersive experience technology can bring in and uh, if you see india is a great destination we have a great uh, you know big big telco players but 5g is yet to come and that's i see is the huge potential you know bringing the right immersive content bringing the fans closer to the game and Manish has uh, muted. I think. Oh, I think someone, it, oh, someone lost muted. connection. Yeah, no, 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 sorry, we lost. Yeah, sorry, yeah. we lost you for a bit. Okay, so I'm saying 5G. Uh, you know, uh, 5G digital. These are the technology which will bring fans closer to the game and go the, grow the game because these are the people who are actually going to put the money on the table. These are the people who are going to buy the digital tickets. So I can see the future where physical tickets will be replaced by digital tickets, where I can see a very immersive experience on my living room, on my study table, on my dining table, rather than visiting a stadium. And, you know, I know the vaccination has started, but I feel this trend will define the future. How are we going to play the sports? How are we going to consume the sports? Vis-a-vis -vis how it was being played in the past and how it was being consumed in the past. Hakim, if my can I ask a question to Mr. Manish? Yeah, yeah, please, 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 uh, Professor uh, Armagam. Uh, uh, my name is Manish. It's very uh, exciting to know uh, the various uh, possibilities with the 5G. So I was wondering how that can be utilized for uh, sports science aspect. I mean, you explained uh, explain in detail about how the fan getting into the sport and other things. But I see the wider uh, application of uh, the. Uh, them into, for example, uh, Akim himself would have gone to all the testing when he was 20 years ago under Dr. Majumdar. It was within a lab with all that, but now things are changing. They're going into the field. Even our biomechanical lab, uh, they want to do it in real time. So the real time while the athlete is playing, they're getting the data that gives uh, for a lot of room for analysis and the analysis of their movements, their angles, and then prevention of injuries and, and so on and so forth. So how do you think the 5G technology or this hologram all can uh, play a role or uh, artificial intelligence and virtual reality? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Science, science uh, uh, improving the performance of the athlete. So, so, so uh, you know, I was anticipating this question and when Dr. Majumdar was talking about the challenges uh, from sports science uh, in India, you know, I was anticipating this question. So it's a very interesting question. So then let me try to answer you with two, three different technological use cases. How are we seeing it is changing? You know, all the players have been given a smart vest. There are IoT sensors there. So now when a player is actually training, when you are watching whether he will qualify for the next game or next league or next level or not, all the body parameters, his heartbeat, his pulse, his oxygen level, everything, is being coming onto an app or the data is being collected and you are seeing his fitness level his endurance his strength everything and you are seeing it over the years so if you want to see how consistent was this player for an example uh, for you know uh, sustaining for a football game or uh, you know a, a marathon for an example over the last 10 years so you can track his performance since he uh, passed out from class 12th or school 
yeah and since he got into the university you can track his performance over the year and you can say you know this guy is very consistent he has some natural ability to become an ex uh, you know excellent athlete and you can take a decision that's one part of it second thing you said you know the body movement the posture the injury so we have a solution uh, which is video analytics yeah which will help people and we are already talking to uh, aiff so uh, you know we were on a discussion with uh, mr praful patel around 2 3 months back and he really liked the solution so this pandemic has also impacted the ability to scout the talent so you know how can you know the the, the person you know uh, the local coach or the person can send his video you know and uh, that video can come to you or you know or you can just put it into a video analytics software and find it out whether he will be good for swimming or whether he will be good for uh, running or whether he will be good for being a footballer and then you can also decide once you start a particular fitness regime to improve his strength or endurance or fitness you can also monitor whether it's helping it or not technologically and accordingly you can change the course of the treatment yeah and similar you can you can check his performance with the different nutritions you are giving so there is a lot of data which iot sensors or smart waves this can create now the very interesting part of it the fans are equally interested you know imagine if you would have a technology when ms dhoni has hit the winning world cup 6 in 2011 yeah if you would have a technology that's what's the heartbeat of the baller wicket keeper and ms dhoni yeah so fans are now demanding such data when a winning goal has been done yeah what was the heartbeat of the player goalkeeper you know because they want to see you know they want to know every details related to their player and it can also you know um, avoid some kind of injury because i'm sure um, you know dr majumdar and uh, professor armangam you would have heard you know long back there was a news in europe that a football player 27 year old young football player died on the pitch because of the cardiac arrest yeah you can monitor all this and provide an emergency help also which is required during the game so technology you know uh, and what dr majumdar is saying right so whether it's a biomechanics anything you know sports medicine performance we have everything to be integrated with what you deal with the athletes on a day to day basis from technology point of view and we have a proven solution so we so we can integrate it and you know if outside of this forum if you want to pilot it or something we are more than happy to share our you know details uh, but we can definitely move the needle and technology will be a needle mover right from is you know I, and we have gone to the level where finding out a staff whether they will check their you know status on the app or with wristband and all whether they are fit to go to the office for a sporting organization the coaches they can check and you know checking your covid level and then checking your fitness regime connecting you to the fans providing fans the right data which they feel very excited about we can do the whole 360 degree ecosystem i think that that will play a huge role as uh, dr majumdar was mentioning and our sports science uh, the performance enhancement centers were uh, few and you know uh, we all know like you know Uh, and I came out so well, uh, agree being a Olympian uh, athlete. Our talent, our hard work really doesn't match our medal tally in Olympic or any other international event because we lack that sports science uh, final uh, uh, pitch. And we have now got uh, centers. Uh, you know, one one is of course mine and uh, sports at that of India. Dr. Majumdar uh, is uh, indicated. Government of India come out with a very uh, visionary program. Have launched almost about twelve centers across the uh, country. So also um, we also kind of provide uh, sports assessment for uh, Kerala government. You know, before they all have to come to my center and then do the. You know, of course, biomechanics is a big um, term now. All uh, uh, you don't need all big uh, uh, cameras. What we have in our lab. Yes. What we need. Yeah. the to the yeah. back and cameras and force plate but you don't need all of uh, them for all the players simple uh, the mobile phone can take a 2d uh, videos yeah, 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 analyze your biomechanics as that as uh, manish uh, mentioned it can give a initial clue then always you can prune them on top athletes you can bring them to the top centers and that will improve the uh, 
the, uh, the sports science ecosystem. So I really feel there's a good um, uh, synergy in the technology and sports science. So I would like to tell something here, uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Professor Armangam and Dr. Majumdar, the best part is that all this is, uh, you know, uh, make in India only. We, our centers are in Delhi and in India, where we are developing all these technologies and developing all these use cases. Yeah. So it's very easy, you know, Sai is there in uh, Delhi only. It's very easy for us to, you know, plan the pilot and see how it is actually helping you. Because, you know, this, last time when we were discussing in another forum, uh, it was very challenging uh, to know. Uh, <clears throat> Their, their scouting was on hold. They said, we can't go because of this pandemic. I have to create a pass if I need to go to scout a talent and that is impacting the tournaments and all. And then we said, why can't you can based, uh, create a video-based scouting solution? And, and that, that, that has, that, that's actually something, you know, is the need of the art. Whatever we were not doing, I, I would never have imagined this conference last year like this. We all are following the digital regime. Yeah, so so that's the future and more than happy to have a discussion offline and, you know, uh, help in all possible way. So, Hakeem, probably if I can just share a few thoughts yeah, about please, that. Please come yeah, in, see, uh, Murida, when if, it's, uh, in. Yeah, yeah. If the context is about uh, whether India did have a place in the field of science and technology in sport, drawing from my 20 years of experience and my company's experience, uh, predominantly involved in technology for 20 years and about seven, eight years in science, where I say a distinction between science and technology. I would say India doesn't lag too much behind, okay? And I'm saying from my experience, okay? And my experience is having got technologies at the highest level, whether it's a World Cups or whether it's the FIFA Football Club or the Cricket World Cups or the Rugby World Cup. And probably I can share two, three contexts because what we did is that uh, between two to 2000 to 2010, we used a rugged Indian terrain to test bed lots of technology, which connects to a fan, which enhances the fan experience, which gives a better promise for the stakeholders, which enables a return investment better for the brands, so that the whole ecosystem can see different value proposition for different technologies comes into play. And when we probably worked hard in the local terrain in India and understood where the technology will fit in into an extremely challenging environment, Yeah, in 2010, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. When in 2010, uh, we took that uh, technology into some of the most important sporting markets, such as uh, UK and Europe, between football and rugby, within a matter of about uh, 12 months, we could capture a large percentage of market share. Okay, that shows that there's one thing. Probably the world of sport has been very primitive when it comes to embracement of technology. And if you see, that's a one freaky moment where we had a freaky success coming up in Europe and UK among football and rugby. I'll give another example. Okay, An example is where you identify Australia and New Zealand. We always say they are the most evolved technology nations in the world. They adapt just to the technology. So in 2014, when the Cricket World Cup ICC asked us to create a complete digital experience for the fan and the brands and the ecosystem, and uh, Cricket World Cup was happening in February and March in uh, Australia and New Zealand across 15 stadiums in uh, in about 15 uh, cities. The challenge was to see that uh, where does the technology sits there? And when we started exploring that market in 2014, we felt they were at least a decade behind India. Absolutely shocker. You would never ever believe that a place like Australia is a decade behind India when it comes to technology. What events like IPL and all of them did is that it pushed just not the sporting frontier, it pushed the entire boundary of what the ecosystem is and brought in a new type of player of a technology having relevance to a sport, connecting to different players. I think that's where we started getting the leap. And that leap is propelling because very recently in 2019, we won the Rugby World Cup complete digital project. And we've competed against the, some of the biggest in the Japanese market called Mitsubishi and Sony and Panasonic. But clearly our compelling technology was so probably innovative it made the Rugby World Cup happening in Japan over 14 cities to be awarded to us and not to the giants like Mitsubishi. So two things comes into play when it comes to technology, size becomes relevant. Second thing it comes into play when it comes to disruption, sport always embraces. It doesn't probably go by the pedigree. It takes beyond pedigree and that's where opportunity for India comes. Because when you come from an Indian ecosystem where we are not a sporting nation except for cricket, we are not as technology developing nation. We are a more software probably company, uh, nation. 
when you look at that perspective and then you can see this context, you see there's a future. The future is the sport ecosystem is completely agnostic. It doesn't talk about the geography. It doesn't talk about pedigree. It doesn't talk about the size. All it talks about, can you bring the change? Can you bring the disruption? And India has certainly made some impact in my view. And I continue to believe if you show the right promise and the growth, we will see the accelerated probably investment, intellectual investment in India, which will make probably, I wouldn't say India superpower, but India very, very probably relevant when it comes to the context of technology. Like you see in the case of Formula One, you see the London and UK as the hub because most of the technology sits there. Clearly, I would see when it comes to fan engagement, India may just emerge as a superpower among all the global nations because we may have a better control over technology and a science and manage it better for the stakeholders. No, so just my my uh, my my two cents on uh, what Murli has said, uh, and I concluded my conversation. We develop all this based out of India only. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, I'm not talking about no, 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 no. I am. A, I agree with your thoughts. I think you know we have enough talent to develop this technology and experience. Only thing so far, India has not been the consumer of such market, and such kind of forums like you know Sai and Fiki has actually opened the channels. Yeah. To put the problem as a bigger problem, you know, if you see, you know, uh, as as uh, Murli has mentioned, you know, being an Indian company, they have developed something, uh, you know, out of India, and finally that got consumed in Japan or Australia. The only reason is that there is a need. Then they they clearly see where the technology can be implemented, and we are anyways, uh, you know, the superpower in building the technology led solution since decades. Yeah. But only thing now the need of the R and thanks to this pandemic has accelerated, you know, the technology absorption in India also for moving the needle for a sports transformation. Manish ji, I have one question to both of you. Can please, I? Dr. Machinder. Yeah, yeah, please, Dr. Machinder, please go ahead. Uh, the real now uh, because of uh, our uh, prime minister. At Atmanirvar, Atmanirvar Bharat. Yes. So and now, uh, while procurement, uh, we have found that it is extremely difficult uh, uh, because the Indian uh, make equipment, neither they have the standard nor they are uh, at par with the international, uh, whatever the equipment uh, manufacturer they used to supply the equipment in. In particularly exercise physiology, sports biomechanics, of course, is quite, um, uh, I mean, quite complicated. Yes. Where we are, we are the ruler of um, Silicon Valley uh, because mm. the software people, most of the software people who are working across the globe, they are all from our country. Even for uh, the equipment which we are aspiring, it is not because engineer, uh, we have the best engineers produced by our country then why we are not uh, able to compete with the international um, uh, players who are across the um, uh, across the globe what are the real challenges can you so, because but, both, are, both of you are from software and uh, hakim is from engineering background yeah yeah, yeah. no no so so very well said uh, you know um, i will just uh, take a stab at it so one thing is that if you see there are three markets clearly USA, Middle East and EMEA, uh, Europe, uh, you can say, and third is the Asia Pacific, wherever India comes and all that. Now, if you see USA, they are, since years, they are highest number of gold medal winners in any Olympics or any tournaments, USA and Russia, yeah? And the re reason for that, they are using technology. And if you see, a fan, for an example, I'll give a very simple example. If you just open a fan engagement platform, of any US league or any Indian league, you find our fan engagement platform does not have 50% of the functionality. What NFL, NBA, they follow. It's a very different maturity level. So very matured market US is. And they ensure that technology should be used right from the schooling days. You know, the talent scouting does not start uh, once, you know, uh, like you feel like I am a, I am a player. It's not like that. You, you automatically know, you go through certain coaching, certain trainings from nutrition, from sports uh, biomechanics, from a sports psychology perspective. So you have been monitored from an early age. You have been, uh, you know, uh, tracked and traced at a county level, at a state level. We also do have that system, 
but not very effective. It's it's very biased also at times, I can say. So we have never shown, uh, you know, and Dr. Majumdar, I know the how the procurement process is. I, I have gone through it because when I was in India in my previous life, uh, when I was using India as a geo in my previous company, it's very difficult. I was working with a lot of government organizations. So we have never shown the willpower that how technology can move the needle in sports. And all these countries, they always follow that. They are very, very clear, you know. Now, still, I don't know how much people they follow, but still, when I start my day, and that's a very important regime in any, you know, uh, any sports person they follow. First thing, I, I, I wake up and I see what is the temperature outside. Should I wear a coat for a running or should I wear just a, you know, jumper kind of thing? So that's a, they, they use technology technology excessively very very at, at a very primary level at a school level uh, you know at a primary school level so my daughter uh, for example goes for a badminton coaching my son goes for a football coaching with adidas football academy and the moment i i drop him at the adidas football academy i get a notification saying he's been checked in when i when he when he checks out i get he, he's been checked out and they put a wristband. It says what was his body vitals throughout that game. What was his heartbeat? How many laps he made? You know, and now they are started putting the sensors in the shin also. Yeah, that that measures the shot intensity and the direction. So I can see everything on the app that how was the game for him. And I can clearly see it also says how much calories he has burned. So I clearly see he has been lazy, lazy on a particular day or he has been very energetic and he was not doing well. So, you know, I think there are people, there is a lack of thoughts and willpower uh, from, you know, the Indian diaspora, especially the government side. But now you guys are coming and this pandemic has given a further opportunity. There are enough technology. And as Murli said, we all do develop based out of India only. Only thing our consumer market is US and Europe. So if we can do it for them, doing it for india setting up a lab in india is very very easy from tech mahindra perspective especially when we are based out of delhi and if i may come in yeah. yeah if i can just come in uh, manish is there a you know is there a challenge um of, is it i mean because when you mentioned the adopt adoption of technology in the global setting or in more of the in some of these mature countries is it the also the paying power because i'm sure the fees that are commanded by these clubs would also be at a different point, which integrates or, or accounts for the technology that they adopt versus the challenge in India, where we are still trying to, whether it's the government or whether it's many academies, it's still very price sensitive and uh, which may create a, a slower adoption of technology. Now, if you honestly ask me, technology is cheaper in India for India people. Yeah, so yeah, what, yeah no, but what? It's, it's about accounting for it. It's about accounting mm. for that value in, mm. in the service we provide. So no, exactly. Me... exactly. So I think, you know, and uh, I, I, I recon on uh, the point made by Dr. Majumdar, you know, the, the quality of equipments. Yeah. So definitely that plays a very major role in, in you know, for finding out a right athlete, uh, getting to the complete life cycle and, uh, you know, uh, maturing him as a professional or kind of, you know, a very highly aspiring athlete. That's a whole transformation journey. And that require a very different set of equipments, diet, nutrition, and, you know, the guidance, the coaching, and, you know, the complete, it's, it's a completely different ball game. And they have a very scientific process. We do have a scientific process also. But it's very manual. You don't have a staff to support it. You don't have a technology to play the role. You know, Mr. Majumdar or uh, Prof. Dr. Majumdar and Professor Armangam, they might be watching. Okay, this guy is slightly improved. He looks more fitter. He's running faster, kind of thing. But still, we don't have the technological enablement. And you know, cost is definitely a factor. But let me tell you, the cost of implementing something for the matured market and developed countries is much, much higher. We get, we usually paid very nicely for implementing such a digital transformation project. But when we talk to the local club and bodies, you know, there are two things which come into the play. And, you know, first thing, everyone tries to go through a sponsorship route. Yeah, where, you know, we feel oh, why, why that is happening, number one. And number two, uh, which is equally important, I want something cheaper. So that also 
you know you can't get everything if you are looking for a complete transformation of an athlete and you are running a such a you know nationally acclaimed professional body you definitely need to invest put your investment at the right buckets to ensure you get right. the roi on you know whatever the investments you are making so See, again, again, right. professor professor wants to the question of professor basically is that why is that the indian technology is not uh, very prominent and very visible across all players i think the simple reason i would see from my perspective is that india was a very very amateur sport market okay when i say the sport is was very amateur the market is very amateur when a market is very amateur it doesn't have commerce generating capability you have a limitation how much of technology can go in particularly when technologies are very expensive and it's how probably the you all market probably had a kick start probably primarily because they were probably there for the last 30 40 years since they had the commerce flowing in but certainly we are catching up pretty fast because i can say most of the india sport today are not too far behind going from my experience as i said each one have a different experience but my experience is from a kabaddi to a volleyball they are all far, far ahead when you see them to a comparative sport happening in other parts of the world in terms of the overall experience and the technologies they use they want to use different technologies and the challenge here is to see that as we are creating a very very i would say a proactive startup system it is those startup which will give us a kick start to enable lot of cross technology which can serve these type of mass markets such as india or china or bangladesh or markets like that because what we need is not just an affordability what we require is a very geo customized technology which is good enough for a particular market for example not many know that we were the first in the world to create a ott platform for a cricket about 7 years before we took ipl to 150 countries and when we took to japan in way back 7 years before we had people in japan watching the live game in japanese language in 2013 we did the geo localization geo languageization when they were watching it in china they were doing it in mandarin they were doing a meta tagging that means they can watch the game at any point of time just only that one particular moment you can see that if an opportunity is provided india becomes an explosive probably country which can exploit all these opportunities the fact that that we don't bring those opportunity is where the handicap comes so that the technology is not exploited so if i had to answer the question of professor majumdar i think we just started the journey of where the indian technology can reach we will see a very quickly in the next few years and hybrid technology which can interface the hardware and the intellectual which is the brain behind or the neural behind the any technology and we be the pioneer in the neural side of it leaving the hardware side for the chinas and the other parts of the world because we don't want to be doing something which is very capex sensitive you want to do something which is intellectual sensitive which can be dealt held as a intellectual rights for you to command an authority over that process exactly manish ji i uh, and molli ji uh, my point was um, you have given that but my point is um, uh, as um, you people are indicating that um, the europe is your business house very serious business house or us your serious business house the my thing is uh, if my uh, 10% of the countryman is serious enough in a sports which is as good as the population of europe so that kind of thing i mean we are in a process of developing the entire ecosystem of the country it takes time because but we are uh, in a process of uh, doing that and this is a very they, this india would be the next uh, destination for the entire uh, world absolutely dr majumdar if i could if you put a context i can again probably just to answer the question of professor if you put a context you need to see where does probably the next 5 to 10 years which is a logical question you'll have next year is because if you see australia for example it's a country which does about 50000 dollars as a per capita and you have about 25 million and they spend about uh, they spend in double digit that means probably over 9% of their annual salary is spent on sport consumption which is around buying tickets buying merchandise and watching your subscription to the sport having beer all of that that comes probably with our ecosystem that's probably multi billion dollar if you talk about in india we are talking about a minuscule percentage which is nowhere near a 1% which is generating hardly a billion dollar if i have to have a situation where 1% of every indian is going to spend when i talk about india not the hundreds of crores we are talking about the 500 million uh, indians who are in the middle class and the lower middle class if they are going to spend 1% we are going to see an explosion where it will generate 1.3 trillion indian rupees in the next 5 years of commerce from the today just 6 billion you can see how much of transformation if you have that type of growth happening why will people not develop technology why will probably not sport ecosystem flourish in this country it's bound to flourish because 
1.35 million trillion rupees is anything which even the best of the US company wants to come here. And when we decide here and when we see that type of growth happening, we should all be inclusive here and see how much we can all fire power the India to become a nation just not for outside exporting, but also for our own internal consumption. Very true. Okay. So, so um, you know, I know we've you know already be overshot our time. So, if I could, you know, uh, request uh, and start possibly with Dr. Majumdar. I know we've covered a lot of our you know topics, but Dr. Majumdar, I know uh, you know you're playing a very key role in the talent development for you know the, the towards Paris 2024, uh, to, you know, then LA 2028 Olympic Games. What's your wish list like? You know, if you have to, um, if if you have a wish list to you know to to take the sports science uh, to the next level, so that no Indian athlete needs to ever travel abroad to get tested, and everything can be done here at the highest quality. In fact, potentially, uh, you know, maybe attract other people from around the world to come to India to get tested you know, for the sports science, uh, what would your wish list be? What would it be? Yeah, uh, you know, as uh, initially I have mentioned that uh, we uh, wanted to establish the world standard uh, sports science laboratory uh, across the country. And there are other stakeholder uh, like SRM is one, then um, uh, Bellari is uh, Jindal Institute is one. So all, all uh, because the private parties also should come with the same way because uh, Sai cannot reach out to uh, so so much huge population, uh, sporting population. So that's uh, that's uh, one aspect. And uh, we uh, now there are two centers which are um, at par with the international standards over the sports science concern. In SAI is one is Patiala and one is. Uh, Bangalore, and similarly, we are. Uh, I mean, other 13 centers is coming in. In fact, 23 centers across the country we wanted to develop within two years. So uh, the timeline is two years. You can understand that uh, what would be the pace, and uh, the ministry has given the sanction of uh, uh, quite uh, a big amount to establish those centers. We are very lucky to have. Uh, the sports minister with that kind of vibrancy. All of you know that. So uh, that's one. Second thing, uh, my wish list is uh, one is a genetic aspect uh, need to be tapped. That's why we are in a process of developing the genetic lab in two different center for selecting talent based on uh, the genetic uh, potential. So that is also uh, the second. You know, biomechanics is one of the area which is uh, really in swimming. Hakim, you know that uh, particularly for correction of the stroke technique, you require a lot of biomechanical um, uh, information in the initial stages, because in the later stage, it's not possible once you uh, your uh, technique is already imbibed. Right. So that also biomechanics also in a major way like. Um, uh, IMU and uh, motion analysis system and 3D motion capture system. All these things is already uh, we are making to have the very recent, bio, uh, very latest biomechanic or gate lab. And uh, the entire uh, sports science it would be a, a new dimension within a timeline of one year. You can you can see that with a I mean. A cohesive effort of the private agencies uh, all together. Uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, on that note, you know, because I, you know, with the mention of the private agencies, I would just pull in uh, Professor Armugam. If you can, you know, um, have the last word um, on, you know, how does the private enterprise or private sports science setups like yourselves, uh, you know, support and supplement, you know, the efforts of uh, entities like the Sports Authority of India towards, um, you know, further taking Indian sport and the athletes to the next level. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's come, uh, uh, looks promising uh, from the, what we have, we know what is our, uh, what we lack. That is the uh, spread of sports science awareness across the country. This, all the technology now, it's possible. We have about uh, so many centers will be set up by government of India, but also private agency like ours and few others. Then with the technology, uh, even base level sports science can be assessed throughout the country. And what we lack is also 
the data is there as dr manish said and the child is playing all his data is coming we need a sports science scientist to analyze this data and come to a right. conclusion and tell the coaches that's where uh, we also into sports education and uh, we work in tandem with the government of india in fact uh, uh, recently we have launched an online certificate course along with uh, our center for sports science with sports authority of india almost four uh, sub specialty of sports science uh so, know, sports physiotherapy or sport nutrition sports psychology so it will be a uh, six months online courses again technology comes into play maybe because of pandemic but they come in for a final practical exam uh, on face to face so that improves the uh, sports and availability so it all looks very promising and uh, government of india also recognizing the the centers of excellence in the private side and we all work together that's the most um, uh, satisfying factor so fantastic um, professor arugam thank you thank you for those uh, you know positive outlook yeah uh, you know and uh, if i can just sum it up i think um, it sounds definitely that india has continues to have a very strong potential of growth and with some of the factors whether it's the human capital in the sports science front or um, you know the consumers uh, you know motivation to now spend more in you know consuming high quality sport uh i you know i i agree that we have a very bright future and i really look forward i know that it's it's a very tough um, subject it's very vast it has many connection points and um, time is always a challenge on such a topic so i would really again thank each one of you for your time and your inputs and i'm sure um, you know the audience would love to uh, connect with you all beyond the session and maybe get more of their questions um answered by you all thank you very much thank you fikki again for setting up the platform and uh, thank you to all the panelists for your time